Alright, welcome to another video, and before we get started, I'd like to take a quick minute to thank all the Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names you see scrolling across the screen right now. Uh, they make this financially possible, and without you, I probably wouldn't be here making videos, so thank you. All right, so welcome back to another video. As you can see, we've been in the air for about 40 seconds right now. Uh, we're flying the T1 Ranger with walk snow, and we managed to keep the pan servo. Um, so what I'm going to do on this flight, this is pretty much just a shakedown flight with the new HD system on board. And we're trying out the pan and, and make sure everything's good with the autopilot and the video and center of gravity and all that good stuff because you know obviously we made some physical changes i did have to move the battery back to keep the balance point the same so it, everything should work out fine but uh we just want to kind of fly and verify all that good stuff so once we loop back around here i'm going to go back to cruise mode and just kind of fly the airplane around a bit All right, so we're back in the cruise, and like I said, what we're going to do, we're just going to fly the airplane around, and you're kind of going to see the result of the switch to HD. And really liking this pan setup, and I'm glad I decided to go ahead and keep that. I wasn't sure. I almost went with a fixed mount, but I decided to keep the, uh, the pan servo on board. And I can see my white balance hunting quite a bit, more so than I remember seeing. I guess it's just kind of challenging lighting. It is kind of hazy right now. There seems to be like some kind of smoke or fire or something nearby. There's smoke in the air. I can kind of see it and smell it. I don't think it's anything to do with the wildfires up north because we're all the way down in Louisiana. But, I mean, that would be pretty amazing if, if the smoke was affecting us all the way down here. But, obviously, there's some kind of smoke in the area. And there's been a lot of... Uh, uh, thunderstorm activity in the, the area earlier today and unfortunately we still didn't get any of it no rain got us here but we could kind of use it it's pretty dry but there's a lot of uh, humidity in the air that could be some of the haze I'm seeing too but anyway what I would normally do is kind of do a walk around of the airplane showing some of the changes that we did and then test fly it at the end but i decided to do a little bit different on this one because i'm kind of well i mean i guess i could have flew it today and then filmed the walk around and stuff later and put the video up at a later date once i have time to do all that but i kind of wanted to get it out sooner and uh what we'll do is i'll post the flight that you're seeing right now first and then i'll do a walk around showing the changes afterwards in a future video and that kind of gives you the opportunity to pose any questions that you might have. And, you know, obviously I'll show the changes I made and stuff that I want to talk about. And also I'll try to address try to address any questions that any of you might have as well. It'll give me a chance to uh, get some input from you on what you would like to see in the video showing the walk around. But so far everything seems good. Um, like I said, I'm pretty happy with the pan. Being able to look back over the tail and everything and it, it's kind of a nice view and then i have an unobstructed view and i look ahead straight ahead i'll probably put an image up just kind of showing what the mount looks like i actually have the uh the hd which is the v2 pro kit with the good low light camera and once again like i mentioned in my last video that's thanks to mark who pretty much funded that with some uh some gift cards to race day quads so i was able to order that on saturday and had it here monday 
and then I worked up the mounts, the 3D printed parts and everything and got it all set up. And now today's Thursday, we're flying it. So it was a pretty quick turnaround. Pretty happy with all that, how that all worked out. Um, one change I do see that I need to make, I'm going to have to raise my uh, horizon indicator, the artificial horizon. I need to raise, raise it up on the OSD so that it shows closer to the actual horizon. I mean, that's just a little minor thing it's not a problem it's just something i see that i can improve i'm gonna go ahead and gain a bit of altitude i notice my bit rate is sitting kind of low a little bit lower than than typical for flying out here um you can't see it the way it it looks i mean it looks like there's no antenna behind me if i look back but there's actually an antenna that sits right next to the camera lens when i pan either way and it's the single antenna and i went with uh one of the Rush FPV cherries that I had replaced with the HGLRC hammers, some of my other planes. I had a few of those cherries sitting sitting around going on use, so I went ahead and used one on here just to uh, swap out the stock antenna. But I've kind of, I've noticed with the V2 in some situations, the only other one I've flown the V2 on was the AR Pro. And it seems like sometimes the bitrate will be a little bit low compared to the V1 with the dual antennas. But it is seemingly a little bit more consistent. You see it's kind of sitting kind of pretty much deadlocked on 13 megabits. It doesn't really fluctuate as much as it will with the V1 at, at some points in time. Um, I'm not sure if we can see it if I look back. No, you can't really see it, but my crossfire antenna is back there on the tail boom. I'm using the extended antenna and I just thought about, um, I forgot to stand it up vertical. It should be standing up vertical, but it's actually laying horizontal right now. And I'm kind of watching my, uh, my link quality on the crossfire system and everything is working fine. So I'm not going to really push too far or anything because of that, but it does seem to be working fine, but I'm not going to worry about it too much for now. But I did forget to turn that. It, it it's on a mount that kind of snaps onto the tail boom and I have a little plastic tie holding it tight enough to stay where you turn it and I turn it horizontal just to store the airplane and I was supposed to turn it vertical before I took off and I forgot to do that I just realized that normally if I would look back you'd be able to see it sticking up back there but it's laying flat right now which should be fine for the most part we're not pushing real far anyway but it could be better if it was standing upright Looks like they're actually disassembling the catch pins that were out right here. I'll kind of overfly them a bit and then turn back. We can look down at them using the pan. Yeah, there was a catch pin out here. Has been for the longest time. But it seems like they're actually disassembling that. I knew they were out here working today. I guess that, that's what they were doing. I could see them from the house. Um, but yeah, I guess that's why they assembled that new one over next to the shed I had mentioned that previously the shed that I like to fly through sometimes there's a new catch pin over next to it so that kind of uh, makes it near impossible or at least a lot more difficult to fly through the shed I haven't done it since they put the catch pin there so it kind of limits uh, my window to get through there quite a bit actually but yeah you can see right down there and in fact, those new, whatever those are, look like either pieces of lens, a pipe, or some kind of lumber or something that's new. You might actually start building a new shed there. But that new catch pan sitting right next to the shed there is new. Or at least recently put there anyway. But yeah, that's one thing that changed out here that I've noticed. But yeah, everything looks good as far as, as the HD setup. I was a little bit worried that I might not have enough airflow through the fuselage for uh, to cool the transmitter. But do have a nice big open vent in the front that lets plenty of air in. I just wasn't sure about the air exit. It's relatively small. I, I typically like to keep the air exit slightly larger than the air intake so that you pull a little bit of negative pressure in the fuselage, if anything. And it, it tends to cool better like that. It's just kind of something that carried over from my earlier days of building high performance electric models. 
it was always kind of a rule of thumb. You want it, the air exit to be slightly larger than the air intake. But on this one, I'm taking in a lot more air than what can exit through the small air exit on the rear of the fuselage behind the hatches. But so, so far, it seems to be working totally fine. And uh, another thing, I did add a Menace RC switch that I can turn the, the video on and off from my radio so it doesn't have to stay powered up while I'm out waiting for a GPS lock. Um, even though this is the V2 that telemetry lost. actually lost telemetry there. Could be uh, probably because telemetry we're flying with recovered. the... Uh, telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. That's another change I need to make. I need to turn off the telemetry alerts on, on the model and the radio. But um, we're probably losing telemetry in and out like that because we're flying with one of the nulls for that receiver antenna facing home. Like I was just talking about a minute ago, the way it, I forgot to uh, stand at a vertical. It's because it's laying horizontal back there. Um, but yeah, it seems to be uh, cooling pretty good. But what I was saying, the uh, even, even though it gets a lot pretty fast, you know, the V2 system doesn't really step on the GPS at all. It's at least much improved over the V1, but uh, nonetheless, it does take a few minutes to get a GPS lock sometimes, and in doing so, while the transmitter is sitting there running in standby mode, they will tend to overheat. And with this one being inside the fuselage, even though it's sitting up in that printed vent right up in the nose and plenty of open airflow to it, I thought it would be a good idea to be able to, to switch the power off while I'm getting ready to uh, take off, and once everything is ready to go, and I just power up the video system and launch. See if we can run that white bird down out there. See if we can spot him first. Yep, he's straight ahead that way. And there's that white balance issue again I saw. I'll have to set a fixed white balance. That's what I ended up doing on the AR Pro. And it worked well. I'm going to go to fly by wire, a. fly by wire so that we can uh, chase him down a little better. I notice I may need to tilt my camera up a little bit more so that I can see. Yeah, see, I see the bird back there behind us now. But when I'm banking the airplane, I can't really see off the wing tip as well at like as I would like. And yeah, he's cruising way out here now. But yeah, we're not gonna be able to catch him. Um, but yeah, it's it's nice the way I have it right now with a slight bit of down tilt. It's nice for looking down at objects on the ground while I'm turning. I can look down the wingtip. But for any kind of chasing birds or anything in the air like that, it's it's not the ideal setup. Oh, <laughs> I was starting to wonder if we were going to catch him there. I don't think he realized we were behind us until he did that little evasive maneuver there. We'll scare up a few more out here while we're at it. You see him out this way. But yeah, everything uh, checks out pretty good so far. So let's go back to cruise. cruise. And uh, we'll head out this way. And I'm going to trigger return to launch just to see how well everything works. Obviously, none of that's going to change just because we put an HD system. But I still like to check them out every now and then. Just give them a kind of a shakedown. And make sure there's no issues that kind of sneak their way in. Yeah, we'll pass the roadway here, and we're going to turn a little bit this way so that it will favor a turn to the left. We're going to trigger return, return to, launch, to launch, and it should climb to 200 feet. And then it will turn to uh, get back on heading towards home, and we'll go ahead and let it fly all the way back and circle home a couple of times. So I'm actually not sure if I have a rally point set or not in this uh, airplane but I guess we'll find out here shortly and if I turn on my GPS where you can see it a little small GPS overlay and I might want to go ahead and zoom out a bit not that far you'll be able to see if it loiters directly over the shop where we armed or out over the field just south of the shop once we get there
see, as far as the, the little airplane, everything seems to be working really well, flying well. Up high, up here, I kind of see a little bit of wind gust, but not too too bad. Um, really happy with the HD system on it. I'm going to be flying it a lot more now because it has HD. And I'm really happy I decided to go with the pans. I really like the way the pan works. I do still think I need to uh, angle the camera up slightly, though. So that I can uh, see a little bit higher up in the turns when I pan over. Although flying, cruising like this, it's it's almost a nice balance between uh, being able to look down and, and seeing things above as well. I might just kind of leave the tilt alone like it is. I'll probably fine-tune that as I fly it some more and decide what I like more. So yeah, it looks like we're probably heading to a rally point and not directly home. If I uh, zoom in a little bit, you can see. Oh, once we get a little closer, you'll be able to see it. Yeah, you can see we're going to circle that point out south of the runway instead of directly overhead. So yeah, we do have the rally point set up in this one. I didn't remember if I'd actually done it in this plane or not. But yeah, it appears we, we have done so. So yeah, everything works as expected. So we've been in the air for 16 minutes now. Um, I would go play around, fly a little bit lower out there. But like I said, with that crossfire antenna laying horizontal, I don't really want to push it and get myself in a spot where I might lose signal and trigger a failsafe. Um, although obviously everything would probably go pretty much as expected. But I'd still rather not. Put myself in a in a situation where I have to rely on failsafe. It's just kind of there as as a backup plan, but uh, that won't stop us from getting down, making a little run up the up the bayou and back. Though we'll we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll set up for a landing. And you see, we have a little bit of tailwind. There's very little wind out. It's showing like two miles an hour right now. Um, but what little bit of wind is there is going to be a nice headwind if we land coming back. From this little run here, we can turn around and land into the wind on the way back. So that'll be pretty fun. That'll be be a, a nice arrangement there. We'll make a nice run down the bayou here. You can see, we're actually starting to have a little bit of water clearing up and less less of those green plants that kind of overrun everything this year and took it over. But it's it's uh, still pretty pretty bad. You can kind of see it along here. There's no way you get through there with a boat unless you have a a nice surface drive system or something like that that can handle it but it pretty much put a stop to all the fishing in the bayou this year we usually have a, a pretty good bit of fishing that goes on in there but so far this year it hadn't been much because of all the nasty overgrowth in there I actually have a fair bit of water up towards the bayou uh, or the uh the bridge up here more than i was expecting looks like they might have leveled some of that dirt that was all piled up out here too. Take a look at that. We'll go ahead and start our turn now. I'm going to kind of give us a chance to look down at that. Um, It's kind of hard to say. There was some dirt piled up right there, that kind of brown spot. It's been there for well over a year as far as I remember. It's like they might have started taking some of that down. Maybe hauling it to the back, something like that. I have to remember to look at that next time I pass up there on the ground. Yeah, I guess they were doing some work out here today. Um, so I guess we'll make another run back up the bayou here. and uh, Actually, they might have put some of that dirt in the neighbor's yard there. It looks like some fresh bread dirt might be where, where some of it went. But we'll make a run back up the bayou here and go ahead and set up for our landing once we get back home. And... Uh, like I said, questions about the setup and what changes I made. Obviously, we're running walk snail now, and uh, I'll sh I'm going to show how I mounted that and everything, and I'll have a link to those printed parts once I have those uploaded somewhere available. And uh, I mentioned the last time I flew this one in, in the last video I posted with it with analog video that I'm running the uh, walk snail GPS with the compass now. The compass is enabled, and I did do a MagFit calibration on that. So it's all nice and set up and ready to go. 
And we're pretty much lined up on the runway now, so I'm going to go ahead and start my approach from here. I'm going to fly by wire, start cutting some power, and start descending. Try to time it for a nice approach toward the threshold. Now, I'm not going to be able to get too close because there is some, uh, some kind of tall grass along the runway threshold there. On that, that little ditch along there. So I'm not going to be able to do a real short landing. But I will make sure I clear that grass and then try to land out in front of the workshop. Uh, kind of level off my descent right now. See that grass I'm talking about I need to clear. Now I can go ahead and cut power and start my flare now. Oh, I was reaching for rudder there. I forgot I don't have one. My uh, pan servo is on my rudder stick. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, the flight. And like I said, if you want to see any more details or whatever, just ask in the comments below this video and I'll try to cover it when I do another walk around of the video of the airplane. I'm going to go ahead and disarm now and go back to manual mode. So that's been my test flight with Waxnail and the T1 Ranger. Um, hopefully it's been enjoyable and hopefully the next walk around video will show how I put it in is going to be informative and those 3D printed motor mounts I'll talk about those and uh, I had to print a hatch mount I broke that one so I'll talk about that and we'll just kind of do a quick little update on the T1 Ranger in the next video so questions comments go below this one and uh, I guess stay tuned for the next one looking forward to that so uh, see you all then thank you for watching